first off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes unrecognized. How do they try to turn a guard? Well, prison, uh, correctional officer. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. Uh how you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. And today we're going to be discussing mental health and well-being. More importantly, balancing work with home. Russ is my guest. We all know Russ. What's up, Russ? Hey, Anthony. How's it going? Good, Russ. Always a pleasure to have you. We are going to have another guest come on this Saturday. He's the author of a book that's coming out around March or April. The title of the book, it really hits home. It's when home becomes a housing unit. Now, he was supposed to be on today, but he works overnight. So unfortunately, uh, he had to go within 30 minutes. Now, you know us, we like to communicate. So I didn't want to rush the interview. It's a very important topic. So we're going to go ahead and do this topic again on Saturday. But me and Russ kind of want to dive into this a little bit uh, before Saturday, just to kind of give you a perspective of where we're planning on going with this. So when we come back from our sponsors, we're going to go ahead and talk about the balance between home and work and maybe some misconceptions something that they've been teaching you in the academy that may not be a hundred percent correct in our opinion so when we come back from our sponsors i think this is going to be a, a dialogue that you guys definitely need to listen to now as always guys the show tear talks for you brave men and women that work in correction so if you haven't subscribe interact engage comment hit that bell those are going to notify you every time i post a video i stand by for our sponsor i wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program i wanted to look at problems different i wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities amu offered those avenues to expand obtaining your degree as an adult you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself you can't put a dollar on it it's priceless it's something that can never be taken away from you American Military University. Learn from the leader. All right, we're back. All right, Russ, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, you're always available for me last minute, so thank you. Oh, no problem, man. I love being here. love doing this. Yeah, it's great dialogue. I love having you because obviously you got that perspective that so far, my opinion, is unmatched. Um, and, I, and I really think it's a needed perspective, so it's great to always have you on. Today, we're going to be talking about the mental health and well-being of our officers. Now, again, again guys, None of us are mental health experts. Uh, again, I have a just a bachelor's in psych, so I'm nowhere near an expert. But we are experienced. We live in the field. So I believe that you should listen to what we have to say. But again, know for a fact that we're limited based on our experience. We are not mental health professionals. But I like to think that those with experience do have value. Correct, Russ? Uh, I think uh, experience can make up for a lot of book learning. And, and, and I just want to say something because he's texting me now, our boy, William Young. He does say great. He appreciates the opportunity to talk about his book with us. Now, uh, Russ, the title of this book, guys, check out the title again. I'm going to say it again. The title again is When Home Becomes a Housing Unit. So, Russ, if you're walking at a bookstore and you see this title, how would you react? Well, I'll I, I would react the same way I reacted when you text me that title earlier because uh you know i got i got to meet william for for just a minute when we were talking and stuff and i said wow you know that title just jumps out because that's something that's something that only someone in this business in this profession would pick up on and go housing unit what's that well we know what a housing unit is and we know what happens in housing units and it's not always good and the funny thing is, is what's so good about this title is it really talks about the balance because I know a lot of us, unfortunately, probably take our work home with us. And I think that's what this is about when home becomes a housing unit. You know, Russ, in the academy, I was taught something and I'm not 100% with what I was taught. And again, it took my years of experience to realize that I'm not 100% with this. And I've discussed this on my show before. But I remember the instructors telling me, leave work at work and home at home. And I agree with the home at home. I agree with that. I don't think we should bring in our home life into work. But I, I'm not in 100% agreement with leaving work mm -hmm. at work. Um, Russ, what's your thoughts on that? Do you feel that you're in 100% agreement with leaving work at work? And guys, Mention to this in the comments, has anyone ever told you that, like an instructor or a mentor, tell you to leave work at work? And I want to know what your thoughts on that are. Hey, 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 Russ, what's your thoughts on that, leaving work at work? 
Um, you know, uh, that thing has always kind of rankled me a little bit. Uh, perhaps a little bit is because maybe I derive a lot of my identity by being a correctional officer. But I've always, I've always felt that if you try and do that, you don't do anything except, you know, split your own psyche in two. Because you're trying to, you're trying to deal with things at work. Um, you need to be able to share some of those things that happen with your loved ones at home. And I don't mean that you got to go into every gory detail and, and, you know, just, and to horrify people. Because believe me, I've got stories that could horrify people. But um, what I do mean is, is you need to let someone in a little bit so that they can get a perspective of where you're coming from. And I think that if we just button things up and down the middle and try and keep them separated by a wall, that we just end up with a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on that wall. And I mean, we've all seen people that have uh, ended up uh, drinking, uh, ended up uh, divorced. Um, ended up in uh, other bad situations. Uh, you know, some of that maybe is, some of that definitely is probably caused by the, the job. Maybe some of it isn't. But I think that we have to look at that and just say, you know, trying to separate the two, it's not going to work. We're all built up of, you know, the conscious self and the subconscious self. Um, they have to figure out how to work with each other. And, and why put more pressure on them by trying to, you know, fit things into neat little pockets and only do things at work and only do things at home. And, uh, just, you know, why would you want to schism your own brain that way? That's my personal opinion. Other people have different ideas, but that's my take on it. You know, my personal opinion also is in agreement with you. Uh, I believe that this job could take its effect on you. I think their effect could be slow and subtle. Um, I think sometimes we don't realize that we're going through changes. Um, and that's the scary thing because we don't realize if we're changing for the good or for the bad. Um, but our spouses, our loved ones, they feel it, they deal with it every day. So uh, the advice I always gave is that you have to be vulnerable to someone. You, you, you're not perfect. And this profession is going to take the best out of you. I, I believe Willie Loman said it best in uh, death of a salesman. You know, you can't eat the orange and throw away the peel. You know, you can't take what's best of a person and then throw away what's left. And corrections can do that. So when you have to admit that you're vulnerable, you, who are you going to admit it to it? Are those that knew you before you entered the profession? You know, are those that know you when you're not wearing that uniform? Because they know who you really are and they know how best to help you handle the situations that you're going through. But again, if you start going through these subtle changes and you don't let your family know or your loved ones know, they're not going to know how to help you because you're going to be a stranger to them. You know, you're going to keep bottling up these concerns and guys, they're going to take the hit, you know, only for so long before they decide that it's not worth it. And you got to agree with them because it's unfair. You know, we have a habit is we bottle stuff up and we bottle and we bottle and bottle and, 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 and it's just eventually going to explode. And unfortunately it is, it, it, when we explode, it's really not necessarily the reason why we're upset. It just happens to be that's the top thing on top that just kind of caused everything to explode. Most of the time, it's maybe something that happened at work. But we have to have a way to handle that. We have to have a way to process that so we don't keep bottling things one after the other. And I think that was a concern that was mentioned with William Young when we had him briefly to discuss uh, his book. But again, we'll have him again on Saturday. Is He mentioned something that hit home with me, and I, and I know it's going to hit home with Russ, but He's right, Russ. We're not processing it. We don't have an opportunity to process it. If we're, if we're in that model, if we're using that paradigm where we have to separate the two, you know, by the time, by the time you get home at the end of the day um, and then you've decided that you're going to compartmentalize your whole life, when do you ever have time to process when that stuff happened at work? Because, right. you know, I've, I've had bad stuff happen to me at work. You know, I've, I've been assaulted and been in fights and been pepper sprayed and all that stuff. When do you process it if you can't process it once you get home? And you know what, Russ? You hit it right on the head. You know, if you're, if you're compartmentalizing it and you go home, you can't debrief at home <clears throat> and you don't want to debrief at the job because you want to have this image that you're this – alpha person where nothing affects you. Let me tell you something. 
some of the best of us, we get affected by everything we go through. Uh, an inmate death could affect us. A riot, an assault, loss of a staff member. You know, there's so many things in our profession that can affect us in a negative way, and we have to have a way for us to highlight or showcase our vulnerability because we're not brick walls. We're human. And at the end of the day, if we don't get a chance to bring out those concerns to someone, like we mentioned before, we're going to explode. And God forbid whoever stands around us when we explode. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I will say this. I will say my natural inclination, my natural tendency, my natural go-to self is to never, ever admit that anything's bothering me and to just truck on. And, uh, and so it can, be, it can be very bad. I, I worked very hard at, uh, at uh, training my wife to uh, be able to accept the things that I have to tell her about what happened in the job. Uh, you know, when I come home uh, smelling of uh, pepper spray and maybe I've got a couple of, you know, minor bruises and lumps and, and twinges on me and stuff and just having to have her recognize that that's something that goes with the job and that sometimes there are going to be those days. And not only does she see it, but she has to hear at least a little bit about it, you know. Like I say, I don't, I don't necessarily have to give her a picture that's in color. Uh, maybe it's only in black and white, and uh, you know, maybe some of the edges are out of focus a little bit. But uh, I think that she's done very well with most of what I've uh, had to uh, keep on her over the years. And let me ask you a question. That creates a good balance, correct? A healthy relationship is definitely a relationship that communicates, and I would like to believe that kind of – it kind of helps with the longevity of your relationship with your partner. Uh, it helps with that. It also helps. It also helps with the job, though. If you're if you're hitting on all cylinders, or at least most of the cylinders at home, and then you're going to, to your you're going to your shift in the morning, and you're taking over your post, and uh, and you've got you know good family situation at home then the things that you have to face that day aren't so aren't so horrible necessarily. And it's not going to put the same stress on you that happens when everything is out of focus and everything is out of filter. Yeah, it gives you something to look forward to. It's sad when people look for work to be escaped from home. You know, and it's sad, but it, it, it happens. And when that is going on, obviously, you're already in that unhealthy relationship. And me, I've always looked forward to going home. I hated being mandated. On it. It's sad what's going on right now with the shutdown. That's a whole nother concern. But just overall, the staffing and the correctional facilities is a lot of stress because you just – they're limited resources, and people are getting mandated all the time. They can't plan events with their family. And, of course, that adds on to stress with your loved ones. So, again, uh, more power to those people that are doing it. Please, guys, you know, stay safe, stay focused. I know it's hard, but I'm assuming one day things will get better. That's why we do shows like this, just to get the information out there. But, again, it's that balanced – home life. It's letting the family know what you're going through. However, I'm not going to say it's censored, but it's respectful. You know, it's respectful to the other party. And again, you know, what's funny guys is I learned a lot recently when I went to Oklahoma, I went to an event and one of the people in attendance was the spouse of a fallen hero. Uh, this fallen hero made national news. This spouse knew everything of everything in detail about what our fallen hero went through because the communication between them both was phenomenal. It just, I, I've never seen it before. And it opened up our eyes because we're saying, you know what, this turned out to be a good thing that you needed this communication because at the end of the day, who continues to fight for that fallen loved one? It's the spouse. That spouse ain't giving up on that fight, and she is good at what she does because of the communication he had with her. He didn't hide anything from her. He, he told her in a very respectful manner in which she understood what he was going through. And, you know, to some extent, he didn't sugarcoat it, but he didn't glorify the violence, if you will, like Russ mentioned. He was respectful 
in how he dealt with it. He didn't want to put added concerns onto her, but he still wanted her to know the truth about what's going on. I'm, I'm trying to balance what I'm saying, but I, I think I hit home with that because he wanted to tell her the job without adding the stress of her having to worry every day. And I think that's the key. And, and Russ, in your opinion, what are some of the reasons why most people won't tell their loved ones what is happening at the job? Well, you know, I think that what, um, what all that comes down to is, is I, I think that um, you can tend to have um, a fear in the back of your mind of those, um, of those people that you love, either not supporting you or drawing away from you because that makes them feel vulnerable, um, you know, if, if, something, if something does happen. And if you know it does, it, it, it puts more stress on it. More, it does put more stress on them. But you know what? Sometimes that stress is really is something that that's manageable and that they can handle. And you're stronger together if you handle it together. I got to ask you something about that, Dema. So obviously, when you were talking to your wife, because I was trying to explain it a little bit, but right there is a level where you don't want to add the extra worry. Correct? You just want them to know this is what's going on. You know, not sugarcoat it, be truthful and honest, but not to a manner where they're stressing out. Because at the end of the day, let's say this happens. Let's say, God forbid, you get majorly assaulted at work. God forbid, but let's, let's just highlight this scenario, right? And your loved one is dealing with that with you, you know, trying to, you know, um, support what you're going through, trying to help build up your strength. But of course, uh, most likely sometimes our loved ones will be resistant in us wanting to come back because, again we were almost taken from them. And then now you have to go back. It's a job. You have to go back and you don't want to have the added stress of your spouse not understanding that you have to go back, you know, because that's another concern. Like here I am, I know I'm going back to work, but if you don't understand why I'm going back to work and you add stress to me, then I'm not focusing on what needs to be done at the job. So how do you tell your spouse after you've been through, let's say, a major assault, that she should be okay with you, or he should be okay with you going back to work. You know, I think I think there's a certain level of this that that comes down to practice. If you if you've established a, a good line of communication, and there's at least you know some openness there. I mean, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, or they don't have to know every little thing. But I think that when something bigger does crop up, um, that that it makes it that much more manageable because that person has had a little bit of practice dealing with that. And, uh, you know, I'll never, I'll never forget. Um, one of the bigger ones that happened with, uh, with me and my wife was, um, we were, we were traveling actually. We were at Disneyland. It was our last day and, uh, the phone rang and, you know, she saw it was the, you know, the prison, why is the prison calling you while, while we're at Disneyland? And I already had a pretty good idea what it was about, but it was uh, the investigations lieutenant calling me, and uh, he was warning me that uh, I'd been green-lighted to be hit on the yard by a gang. And so, uh, anyway, right then, man, I knew, after I had this little conversation with the lieutenant and stuff, I knew that there was like a little window there that I was either going to have to, you know, hide this or, and sweep it under the rug, or I was just going to have to have it out there. And believe me, it was a gut check time. I was a lot more worried about this than what might actually happen to me on the yard. And so I just told my wife, I said, hey, look, I said, there's, there's been a, a green light put out on me that they're supposed to hit me on the yard when I, when I show back up tomorrow. And, uh, and she was fine with it. And I think part of the reason that she was fine with it, I won't say she's 100% fine with it, but what I will say is, is that I she'd been practicing because, you know, I'd come home, I'd smell pepper spray, I'd have some things happen. And we had, we did, we had that dialogue and stuff and she was able to deal with it. And so I was, a, I was able to go back and uh, we did not turn our home into a housing unit, you know, where, where there was, you know, just me, you know, lording things down and running it like that. We ran it together. We ran it like a home not like a housing unit. And that's why, that's why I love the, um, that's why I love the title of this book that, um, that Williams come up with. And you know what, you mentioned something key where you talk about that added stress. And by the way, when we talk about stress, sometimes the stress doesn't come just from the inmate population. It can come from administration. It can come from, um, 
you know, just the way the job operates, you know, sometimes we don't know if we're going to have a job the next day. Look at the shutdown right now. I'm sure there's added stress on people that have to go to work and they're not getting paid. So stress can come in many forms, but again, it's how we deal with it as a couple. And the scary thing is, is that some people, they know the, the, the dangers exist, but it may not be immediate to them. And then all of a sudden something does happen to their loved one and now it's immediate and then reality kicks in. And then now you're getting ready to go back to work and you're going to have your loved one on you saying, hey, I don't want you going back. And the thing is, is these are conversations. I like what Russ said that he introduced gradually to his spouse because he allowed those communications to occur before something major happened. So his spouse already kind of got used to the flow of the profession. But she also, I would like to think, has a trust in you and how you handle yourself. So there's that, I think our spouses know us the best, by the way. I, I think they know our weaknesses in, in, in regards to character flaws. I think they know <laughs> how we handle certain situations. So I think when they have a concern about us, that concern originates for how we are outside the uniform. And we should listen to that concern. Don't get me wrong. Because we don't wear the uniform 24 hours a day, even when we're at that job for eight hours. Sometimes, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we could be pulled out of our uniform. That's why we always have to remember our prescribed role. But it happens. We're human. So when your spouse deals with you and they have these concerns, they're not talking to Officer Hamilton. They're talking to Russ. They're talking that's to their right. husband. They're talking to their spouse. And to me, that's a different approach, correct? That's an approach that you want to listen to, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I like the way you turn that, you know, um, having to live within your prescribed role. You know, when we're having the conversation, it's husband and wife. It's not officer and anyone else, you know. So I, I think that that's, that that's, you know, a, a really important feature to bring up. Also, you need, I really think that you also need to be in the moment handling what what is in the moment right. and too often times we have things you know I know I do you know they're all in the back of my head over here and over here and I'm nodding to her and I'm not paying attention to what she's saying and what she needs sometimes you know so you got to bring it to the here and now and, and live within that moment and be, be dealing with what's going on there you're not the officer at that moment you're you're the husband you're the spouse you're the guy in the recliner. Yeah, and, and can I tell you something? I think that's one of the best advice um, you could ever be given because, again, it deals with communication with your loved one, but also understanding your vulnerabilities. And if anybody could find your vulnerabilities, it's your loved one. Because trust me, if we don't know it for whatever reason, because when you're in corrections, you need to know yourself, especially in this profession. I Because if you don't know yourself, the inmates do. So if your spouse sees something about you, you should listen. Because if she sees it, I'll guarantee you uh, there's a good chance that the inmates are eventually going to see it. And again, if you close yourself off to that type of dialogue, you may wind up um, not being the best you can be behind that wall. And unfortunately, on our job, we have to be on our toes every day. So again, just to kind of cut this to a close, I'm going to keep this a real quick dialogue because I don't want to go into too much because again, we're going to have William Young on the show. I just wanted to post a little something up and on Saturday, we'll discuss this a little bit more in detail than probably be a little bit more lengthy of a discussion because we'll have three parties involved. So we're going to touch on some of these topics again. So feel free to comment. If you have any questions or concerns, hit us up. Me and, me and Russ will be checking out the comments to make sure that we address whatever those concerns are in the episode that we're going to have on Saturday. But basically here's what I'm getting out from this just brief dialogue right now. Don't wait for the stress to pile up. Try your best to deal with it in the moment. Um, find a way to process it. I know it's hard, but again, that's when you're able to go home. I love what Russ said about you got to have um, a way to debrief. You know, if you compartmentalize, then the problem is you're not, telling anybody. So you just, the only option is to bottle it up. Um, communicate with your spouse, communicate with your loved one. Again, we drew a balance on how that communication can be done. Again, it's not to add extra stress into their lives, but let them be aware. I love what, what Russ did. He gradually introduced his spouse 
to the concerns of the job. So again, when something major happened, she was able to deal with it both because she kind of had that introduction, you know, progressively, but also the trust she had in her spouse because he never lied to her. He never told her anything that wasn't true because trust me, even though we may not tell them, they know. We work in a prison. They can find out these embellished shows on TV. So they have an idea of what it is, but it's not a, an accurate idea. So technically, maybe it is good for us to also show them a little bit of the truth about the profession, find a way to balance the positives with the negatives, and just give them a good roundabout uh, idea of what it is that we do. And, and again, last thing, and I'll go to Russ real quick to get his closing thoughts is, listen to your spouse. Because, or listen to your loved ones, your family, because they know you. They're addressing you, not you in uniform. They're not addressing you in the profession. They're addressing you. They see your vulnerabilities and they're letting you know of these vulnerabilities so you can make yourself better. Because at the end of the day, even though I know we wear our uniform, we're at work, sometimes we get pulled out of it. And we have to remember our prescribed role and we have to know that we have these vulnerabilities and somehow we have to make those vulnerabilities a strength. And that's where our our loved ones can help us with that. They can complement that need. What's your thoughts, Russ, real quick? Um, you know, I just want to uh, back up and say, you know, everything that I think we've been putting out there is helpful. Um, I think that when we do the next part of this with uh, with William Young and with his book and stuff, I think that uh, people are really going to be, you know, extra amazed. And I think they're going to want to buy that book. Uh, we talked to this guy for uh, a while earlier today. And he seems to have it on the ball. And I, I think that this is going to be something that's going to be helpful to a lot of guys out there, guys and gals, in, in polishing over some of this stuff. Because, I mean, let's face it, there's, there's not very many jobs out there that have as many different issues as we've got. We've got, we have issues to spare. And guys, I want to mention something before we go, and that's 100% correct, Russ, by the way. We have issues to spare. Very good point. I kind of had my thought going on, and I, I heard it after the fact, but you're 100% correct on that. Uh, I want to send something, something close before we fully close is, guys, we're pushing, we're pushing um, uh, subscribers pretty quick. You know, I'm happy. Again, I want to get that 10,000. Of course, I want to go beyond, but 10,000 has always been my initial goal because I get that ac access to that YouTube studio. So, again, thank you guys for helping me grow. That access to that YouTube studio is right in New York. It's about 10, 15 minutes from my house by Chelsea, I could start getting better guests because again, I'm not doing things from my home. I'm doing things in a professional studio, but I am starting to get people that want to come on the show, want to speak their concerns. The people I'm allowing on, the people I'm giving them, you know, some video spots. Yeah, there are going to be some new people coming in, but obviously they're always in line with our thoughts. They're not pulled away from it because my channel is for my channel. It's I have, a, I have an audience, they subscribe to me for a certain reason, I'm keeping the content consistent. But my, my channel's always been a venue also for anybody that wants to speak their concerns about this field, uh, especially from those that have been in my, 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 my pool for a long time. I've, I've, I've got subscribers and people that have been volunteer talk for four or five years now. So if there's something you want to mention, I'm an email away. Russ is an email away. You know, if there's something you want us to cover, let us know. You know, again, it, it, it's about helping the profession. Nobody could do this alone, and nobody could do this without the support of the many who have helped this channel get this far. And, guys, I see really good things for this channel. I, I think Russ sees it. Gary York sees it. The people I have on the show, they're devoting their time because they see that we're on the way to something great. And it all started with that first subscriber. So I'm really proud of where I've been. Uh, where I'm going, and I really do think that there's going to be tremendous potential here because nobody's doing what we're doing. But I will say, I see a lot of those groups on Facebook, Russ, like the Crooks Officer Brotherhood, 57,000 something strong. We have to start bringing these groups out of social media and into the public. And that's going to be a discussion we're going to have in the near future where I'm going to bring these admins together, uh, Keith Helwig, a few people from a thin gray line, thin silver line. And we're going to ask, hey, guys, we got these social media pages up. You're a thousand strong, thousand strong. What do you want to do next? Because the thing is, we have to start getting off the social media and start making a presence out in the public. Would you agree, Russ? Oh, absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of different things that we need to push. We need to be out there in the public's eye. They need to start understanding what it is we do. Because truthfully, we're in the shadows. They have no idea. 
And now it's time for him to get that idea. Now, guys, if you haven't, don't forget, guys, subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. The bell's going to notify you every time I post a video. See you in a few days. We'll have William Young on. I'm sure me and Russ will pop a video on before Saturday. That's just how we work. Russ, give me a video if you don't mind. Help me out. Help me out. I'll, and throw, I'll, you, I'll throw you one tomorrow. I appreciate that. I'll post it up. And as always, guys, stay safe. See you. See you soon. Whoa.